weighted idiot, he's a criminal, he's everything. We are is a dim weighted idiot, he's a criminal, he's everything. We are is a dim weighted idiot, he's a criminal, he's everything. We are is a dim This is the same guy who went on the video yesterday and I'm putting his support behind George We are and then taking the same angle and unleashing it on Joseph Boaka. You see how he's flipping? This guy looks like a chameleon. He's a chameleon that changes color. This guy is not mentally, emotionally, he's not stable. He needs to see a therapist or a psychiatrist or something. See what he's saying about George Weah. This is the same thing he's now saying about Joseph Boaka, at home he wants to put it. Now, yesterday he flipped and now he's insulting uh, Joseph Boaka with the same vengeance that he once insulted George Weah with. Now he's following George Weah. Listen. Weighted idiot, he's a criminal, he's everything. Weah is a dim weighted idiot, he's a criminal, he's everything. Weah is a piece of sh I just went, it's a piece of shit. Yeah. All right. Yeah, from his mouth. George Weah is a piece of shit. All right. But I just wanted to say this to the CDC people. We're not responsible for George Weah being tall. Mm -hmm. We're not responsible. And George Weah will never, ever have intelligence. It is not in his cards. It will never be there. Mm -hmm. George Weah will never be able to speak good English. He will never... Because all the time he takes to drink Hennessy XO, all the time he takes to womanize, all the time he takes to steal, that's time he could use to do better, to educate himself, to learn how to read well. I have it. You will forever live with a low self-esteem because every day we will be breaking it, we'll be juking it, juking it, reminding you of, uh, uh, of, of the fact that you are an idiot and you are a disgrace. And you are a disgrace to the office of president in any country. In fact, I think George Weah needs to go down in the Guinness Book of Record as the most empty-headed man to ever become president of any country. Mm -hmm. So we will remind you of that every day. Mm -hmm. They will remind you, as you steal our money, I will call you an idiot. I will tell you what you are. I will remind you every freaking day. You should have never become president. You should have never become senator. You should have never come close to holding any, to heading any political party in our country. Yeah. Mr. Weah, just because you're president, you mean you're important. You're not nothing. You're a piece of shit. That's, and so it hurts him. So, so he's feeling bad today. So the other, so I just came to just put saw in the soul. You know the man gets saw in today. Eh? On that four, he got sold there from what he did yesterday. So I can put salt in his soul. You know when you get sold, they put salt there. Eh? That's what I came to do today. Mm -hmm. That's what I came to do the last day of the life video. To suck it there. Cool, 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 cool. Tell where you are a piece of shit. You should not have become president of our country. And you are president and we will never accept you. You go up, you come down, you are not my president. Yeah, oh, you are not my president. That doesn't mean you are not the president of Liberia. But, Chief, I don't see you as my president. You are, you are because you are a piece of shit. That's what you are. You are a disgrace. I think you're calling them piece of shit, man. That's what it man is. You watching the video. You are a dirty, nasty, Gibraltar pig. P-I-G. If you don't know how to spell pig. P-I-G. Pig. That's what you are. A dirty, nasty, sleazy scum of the earth, Gibraltar pig. Who will steal... Don't we are. You watching the video? You are a dirty, nasty, brought... inspired his decision to flip from years and years of being an arch enemy of George. We are all of a sudden now circumstances inspired his decision to not be on the side of George. We are. We like to know what kind of circumstances because you call yourself a public speaker and you have a large platform and you can influence people's decision one way or the other. The people have the right, the public and your followers have the right to know what circumstances inspired your decision to flip. Mm -hmm. Your people, you can just say circumstances. What circumstances? You had a meeting with him. You're one that met in the table publicly or privately. And he promised you, I'm just giving an idea. I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm just saying, what are the circumstances? That maybe he promised you some kind of high position when he gets there in the second term. Or he promised to hand the presidency over to you after his second term, if he makes it in the second term. What are these circumstances that cause Henry P. Costa to flip from being an arch enemy of George Weah to not becoming a supporter? People have to ask questions. You can't just come and make up emotionally sentimental videos all right up and hyped up from the demonic spirit that you listen to called Kanye West. <laughs> you hype it up and then you come and tell us 
or circumstances. Don't come give your people just vague information. When you talk, when you was talking down about George Weah and about to talk down about uh, Joseph Buaka, you didn't just give vague. You gave specific instances and situation. You gave specific details about the circumstances concerning George Weah when you didn't like him. Now you're about to give specific details, uh, 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 information about why you are not supporting Joseph Buaka. So don't give us any kind of vague. We're not stupid. Your people who follow you, they are very intelligent, intellectual people. They are critical thinkers. They think logically and critically. And you don't, don't, don't just come and throw some kind of words, you know, or uh, circumstances. What circumstances? We like to know. Inquiring minds needs to know. Listen. Honorable Dr. Ben and I will for you for his leadership and his steadfastness, his steadfastness mm -hmm. uh, in bringing us to this point. I want to thank, in a very particular way, my dear, darling, beloved sister, Telia Yuri, for leading on organizing yesterday's monumentally successful event to endorse President Weah. I want to also point out that President Weah, you had me having fuzzy feelings on the inside yesterday when you did something very moving, profoundly touching and moving, when you called up Telia on the stage, on the platform, and you hugged her, I could have cried. In fact, I will fight back to tears. Yeah. I'm a very sentimental, very emotional guy. Just so you cool. are very sentimental. I'm tough. Yeah, roaring like a lion, but I'm also very sentimental. You see, just he told on himself, he's very sentimental and emotional. And maybe because George Weah knows that you guys are sentimental and emotional, so he played on your emotions and your sentiments by that gesture. So he hugged her on stage. So what now? Okay. What is that just a game he's playing? You don't even know because when it comes to politics, people will do anything, say anything, and play any kind of role just to get what they want. Finish. Maybe if he, he knows that with that gesture of hugging her on stage, it will sway your mind to come on his side. He was right and he played you. He played a hand and you play right into it. Mr. Emotional Sentimental Henry P. Costa. We're going to continue to listen to you, sir. Mental guy. 3,400 views and climbing. Yes. All right, good. So, yesterday's event was beautiful. The first major political gathering since the runoff was officially declared open. And I just want to say something to you, seditions, and to all the folks there, and all the love, and all our AOP people who came out there. Thousands of them yes, yesterday would pack that, that head, headquarters, our headquarters yesterday, to do that ceremony that we did yesterday. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for coming man. out. I get want to the thank message. you for believing in us, believing in our leadership. He needs to get to the message. All this rambling on incoherent. Anybody interested in all of that? Uh, folks, what do I want to say today? Why have I called you here? For a number of reasons. One of which, as I said, I began with, is just thank you all for the... Um, Beautiful show and beautiful ceremony we had yesterday. Our party, 4,000 views now, and climbing. Our party did not endorse President Weah because we believe that his first term was, I mean, that, that he waved the magic wand and there were bridges and roads. Uh, we did not believe, we, we, we did not do so because we, because we believe that everything he set out to do, he did in the first term. That's not why. We did that because we believe, like any man, he deserves to have a second chance oh, gee, look to look continue look. to build upon that which he's done, that which he's doing, and that which he wants to do. And to make amends for that which should have been done differently, for the mistakes that were made. So his first uh, justification is that George Weah hugged the woman on the stage, Tilia Yuri. I'm getting, I'm getting to know all these people because I just got home. <laughs> it was so emotional, so moving hard. Okay, I just told you what happened. You got played. The second the reason why he became a George Weah fan, he flipping, is to because everybody deserves a second chance. Says who? Like, everybody deserves, who said that? No, it, those statements when people they say people de deserve a second chance, not depending on the state of a whole nation or the generation of a whole a group of people or a whole country. You can't just because if, if a leader is really bad in the first term, I'm not saying that's who George Weah is and I'm not saying that's who he's not. I don't know this whole story I just got here. I'm hearing both sides, so I can't pick up sides because I don't know who's what. 
but I'm just speaking, you know, as a, uh, a blogger, influencer, you got to give your opinion. And you cannot uh, hate me for my opinion, just like and I hate you, but I can dissect. I'm dissecting his inter or his uh, video here. If, if somebody deserves a second chance, that statement is, let's say somebody steal or a prisoner who did something wrong, he went to prison and he got let out of prison, he did his time and he's changed and he became a transformed man or woman. Yes, you can probably give them a second chance, but sometimes you give them a second chance slowly, slowly until they have proved uh, that they are worthy against of your again of your trust. This man, according to the people on ground, since I came on ground in six years, he has done nothing that is worthy of precedency. This is what I've heard. Some of the things I've seen. If it's true, what they say, yes. So how you say he deserve? Everybody deserves a second chance. Why? Who said that? Because you say it. Let's listen. That can and I believe will and ought to be corrected. Those were the fundamental reasons why we were moved to make the decisions we the, the decision we made, which was culminated in the form of a beautiful, splendid, wondrous event yesterday at the headquarters of the All Librarian Party. Four thousand five hundred views and clients. My friend gets the message. I just want to say this. God who made us. Now he bringing God into it. The Alpha and the Omega. He's bringing God into his message. But earlier, if you go back and watch that video earlier, he said he listened to someone on Kanye West's uh, uh, music to hype him up. Yes, I know some people say Kanye is saved, he ain't saved, uh, go, for, go search for yourself. And then we're not here to debate Kanye's salvation. But if you're still part of Hollywood, we know what influences people to write music in Hollywood. Now he's bringing God. Listen, we're going to pray and bring God into the message. But when he finished praying and bringing God, you'll see the spirit of arrogance, pride, and boastfulness. He has no humility the way he talks. Something that you, especially when you have helped somebody in private, in secret, you help them with anything and for anything and for any reason. You don't come and make a video that I help you to do this. I help you with that. I gave you money for this. I supported you. I paid your light bill. I took you to the hospital. I paid your hospital. That's not the spirit of love. That's not the spirit of, of humility. That's not the spirit of somebody who even knows God. You don't, you know, something you and somebody have done in private. Now, because of a conversation you have had, because you're no longer friends, now you're going to spill everything. Then you you lack integrity. A person with no integrity will do those kind of things because you're no longer friends with somebody or you no longer support them. So everything you're discussed in private and every help you give them in the past, now it will become a public affair, a public matter. Somebody else will do the same thing. You're called sowing and reaping. You don't do that. If you're a mature, responsible person, you have integrity, not everything you go put to the public because you're no longer friends with that person. That's not wisdom, and that's something you say. Boaka has a heart; a heart is cold. Yourself, you're, you're exposing your own heart. The way you're talking about an old man in Boaka that you did things for him because you're no longer friends with him. Now you're exposing. You tell him all the things you did to him and did for him, and all the things the conversation you had in private. You bring it to public life. You're exposing your own heart, Henry uh, P. Costa. And just like they said, you're pointing one finger at somebody. You're pointing one finger at Boaka. But four fingers is pointing right back at you. So you're accusing Boaka of being a, having a cold heart and a wicked heart. But guess what? You, as you're pointing that finger, four is pointing back at you. You're exposing. And by your own words, your own video now, you're exposing your own heart and your own mindset to the whole public. For those of you who do not know what those Latin words mean, mm -hmm. the beginning and the end. Whatever. There's only one thing God wants from us. One quintessential reason why God made man. God made man in his own image so that man may worship him. So we're in the sermon now. So that man may sing praises to him. They say, when you know. praises go up, blessings come down. And so my dear beloved brothers and sisters of the beautiful Islamic religion, I'm so there is also a similar passage there. Talking about God Let me sip my coffee seeking there. glory and mm -hmm. praises from those whom he made mm -hmm. in his own likeness and his own image. Good. And so God being a God I'm my who wants us to praise him and worship him and sing glory unto him so that more blessings may come this down. This is all nonsense. Let's get it. When we lift you up, when we pick you up from the gutter, in a very literal sense, we expect that you too, we too deserve to be thanked and appreciated and honored.
that which we did. We entered into a marriage with you in the United Party, mm -hmm. a political marriage. We discounted, we completely ignored our own political interests, and we followed you. We resurrected you. Pass a word. And there is nobody in the United Party that can argue with a straight face that we in the All Iberian Party, an extension of which is the cost of so, that we did not invest in resuscitating your then moribund dead political career. We did not. Mm -hmm. you hear that? Because we believed you were treated badly by Ellen. But later we will come to find out that you are the one who really treated Ellen badly. Mm -hmm. Joe Walker is not a good human being. I will show you some evidence of that today. Hardcore, indisputable, irrefutable evidence mm -hmm. of the ingratitude, the inherent and patent ingratitude of the man called Joe Walker. I know. This, all this thing he's spewing out and spitting out, he said the same thing about George Weah for years. So how anybody going to listen to someone like who's ranting on incoherently, throwing out a whole lot of words? I don't know who he's trying to impress. My friend, just speak simple English. Anybody, nobody impressed? You're not in a debate forum where you have to, or a spelling bee contest where you have to impress each other, how many words he knows, how many words he can spit out, and how many words with four or five syllables. Anybody interested, just speak out and speak from your heart. We're just here to impress. I don't know who you're trying to impress. Anybody impressed by what you got to say? But what I was before I digress. The same thing he's spewing out about Joseph Waka, he spewed the same thing out and more about George Weir over the years. Now, due to circumstances, he has flipped. We want to know the circumstances of me. I'm just concerned about what is these circumstances. Mm -hmm. Don't come here with a lot of noise in my ears, I beg. Why? No wonder why Ellen chose to not support this man. Mm -hmm. He is prejudiced. He has a bitter black heart. He hates people. He keeps grudges. He's a malicious, devious, cunning, pretentious, appearing to be benign and all humble. Why do Africans like Beerans, but mostly Africans, especially if they have been abroad or they spend a few years abroad, or even were educated abroad? When they come to make a video or they want to give a speech, they can't just speak simple English. I don't like, I, I, like, is you know, you're in a debate contest or you're trying to impress? I, I don't get this. My son can speak those words if I want to, but for what? When people are insecure about their own intelligence and the IQ, they will go speak and give all those words because you know, you Africans too, especially those who are not educated. They will eat those words up because those in their mind they think they are educated. You yourself can go pick up a dictionary and a thesaurus, look up those words, look up the meaning, learn the right pronunciation, and begin to alter them out in your speeches. Doesn't mean you're smart. Doesn't mean you know what you're talking about. You see? It's just shallow intelligence. It's just shallow, superficial. I beg, man. Get to the point. Oh, no, all of that is a facade. But beneath the facade is an evil, hateful, prejudiced, wicked old man, ungrateful to the core. Mm -hmm. He is the walking human epitome of ingratitude. Mm -hmm. So Bwaka is the epitome of ingratitude. You who been a friend of Bwaka all these years, supporter, all of a sudden because of circumstances, you have flipped on him. Now everything you and him did in private, you're making it a public affair. But he the one with the cold heart. You don't see how you're exposing your own heart. I called you Rescue One. Do you think I'd really believe that at 80 years old you would be able to rescue this country? You see, listen. We embellished it. You know, when you are a sales representative, <laughs> when you are a salesperson, you're selling a commodity or a product, your job is to embellish that product. It's a fighting woman can say, or fish or bony ratting. Did you guys listen with your ears? He was selling to us that Joseph Buaka is rescue one to rescue Liberia, right? From, of course, George Weir. That was the campaign Henry Costa and many uh, people were using. But you hear what he said? He embellished. You don't embellish me. He exaggerated. He lied. So he knew full well in his heart 
that that old man was incapable of rescuing this nation, but he put his vote behind him. So what does that say about you, Henry Costa? That you're willing to lie and embellish and exaggerate the truth for power. Because more than likely, when that old man gets into office, he probably promised you something. Mm -hmm. And maybe you didn't get what he promised you or the rumors going around that the position he promised you, maybe he gave it to somebody else or he had given it to somebody else. So now you are vexed. And you're all over social media now, ranting and raving and incoherently releasing your full five syllable words to impress God knows who. But he just told the truth. That it was all an embellishment. It was all an exaggeration. It was all a lie. He's a very good salesman. He just told you the fancy woman will never tell you her fish is rotting. So that means the fancy woman know her fish is rotting, but she will sell you a rotting fish. Uh, knowing for what is rotting, but she won't tell you, and you will buy a fish thing, you're buying a good fish. So what he just told you, and he just exposed himself, that he knew full well this old man was incapable of being president, but he lied to you. Why? What were his motives and his intention? And his, his why he lied? So now if he lied then, how do we know he's not lying now? He wants us not to believe him. He wants us to, uh, to believe that he's telling the truth now when he embellished. You see the man exposing himself? If you think, put aside his words, his only four or five syllable words he's speaking, anybody impressed? At least I'm not. Put those words aside. But listen with your brain. Think logically and critically. Is he not exposing himself? He's telling you that he's a very good salesman, that he lied to you guys all these years, that this man was good and capable of rescuing Liberia, only now to come and tell you that he ain't. And he knew that he wasn't uh, capable of running Liberia, but he said it why? Because something in it for him. There was something he was going to gain. You're not going to just go and lie, lie, um, and lie about somebody's uh, capability for a presidential position. If something wasn't in it for you, and why would you even lie? So he he just called himself a liar. He just told you now that he would do, he would lie and say anything about any political party or any political candidate or presidential candidate for power. Because why else would you do it? If there's no gain in it for you, why else to do it? So how do we know now he's not embellishing what he's telling us about George Weir? You see? All of you who follow him, you better get on your knees, ask the Lord who is the right person that should be in our office. Because this nation must be great. We're not getting no war in this country. No sir, no man.